It's been fascinating to observe the response to the Fadden by-election from the political pundits. Despite a swing towards a coalition, one could be forgiven for thinking that when you're on the right side of politics, even when you're actually a winner, you're told you're a loser. Fadden, I know, it's a safe Liberal seat, but the former member had a very chequered history. They weren't political scandals as such. One would have to have some conviction for that to take place. Instead, the scandals revolved around the inappropriate blurring of the lines between public life and business profits. It's likely some of those blurred lines will be carefully examined in the months ahead. And I, for one, and I think we all should, welcome any investigation because it is a means of clearing up any public misconception. In any event, that was the background under which this by-election took place. And on top of it, we had a, we've got a PM who's riding high in the polls and who's claiming the high moral ground on everything from the racist voice right through to skyrocketing electricity prices. How you turn either of those things into a political virtue is beyond me, but that's what they're trying to do. And Labor has already poisoned the political soil prior to the polling day by stating that anything less than a 4% swing to the coalition was essentially a declaration of failure and it's the death of Peter Dutton politically. Well, here's news you might not be aware of. The Liberals actually got a 4.28% primary swing to them. And yet still Labor are claiming it was a failure. They point at the two-party preferred swing of a little under 3%. I actually think this is a pretty um, lethargic result for the opposition. We obviously see that Queensland going into the next election um, is, a, is a place of a, a significant opportunity for uh, for the government. The idea that Peter Dutton, uh, as a Queenslander who is leading the Liberal Party, would take any comfort out of this result at all, uh, frankly, is ridiculous. It's obviously a seat that we've never held before. The idea that anyone in the Labor Party would take comfort out of it is, frankly, ridiculous. Labor themselves went marginally backwards on primaries and on the left side of politics, the biggest losers were actually the Greens. They dropped a whopping 4.5% in primary vote. Incredibly, the real winners were the Marijuana Party, who gained 7.5% of the vote. Now, what does that tell you about the apathy in the voting public? I'll leave that for you to decide. Let's go back to the coalition for a second. They won with an increased majority. Now, going in, I wasn't sure that would happen. So, in that respect, they actually exceeded my expectations. But the real issue for me from this by-election is that the Labor vote didn't really drop as much as it deserves to. We've had nearly 18 months of this government and it's pursuing disastrous policies that are actually really causing a great deal of hardship for many people. Inflation is high, electricity prices are higher, food costs are out of control and the end result is that household budgets right across the country are very, very stretched. And on top of that, they are trying to divide the country along racial lines and they are emboldening and empowering the union movement. Now, none of this is a recipe for long-term national success. But the Fadden results suggest there's still a way to go before the pain threshold is actually high enough that it's going to change a great many votes. It could also be that the jury is still out on the coalition in the wake of the disaster of the previous Morrison government. And if that is the case, well, some more conservative conviction from Peter Dutton, built on the back of a resounding defeat of the voice, will actually set the coalition on a path where, once again, they could be considered an alternative government. And that might happen much sooner than many people think.